Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Hope Hill Cathedral Cyber Sanctuary. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up quick. I'm so grateful that in spite of his plans, that is the enemy, his plans to see us fail, in spite of his plans to see us uh, fall short of becoming or even being in this moment, God has caused us to be together. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for this space. I'm grateful for this chance just to be together one more, one more time. Uh, so good to see you all. So good to see you all. I'm truly appreciative of this opportunity. Um, listen, you could have been doing many other things. You could have been um, scrolling. You could have been doing other things, long story short. But you paused in your, your actions or you, you paused in your scrolling or you, it, with purpose, tuned in. We say thank you and welcome to Hope Hill Cathedral. Uh, you know, I'm so grateful that we have this space. Many of us have our various uh, things that we're dealing with. And I'm so grateful to declare that you don't have to go through it alone. But by faith, we can come together praying and believing, trusting in the Lord. We can pray. Um, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. On this evening, I believe the Lord is, we have the ear of the Lord. He's listening. And all you have to do is ask. The Bible says, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. These are postures we take in prayer. Believing as we have our conversation, as we as we communicate with God, he sends answers, he sends help. And so on this evening, I invite you to continue to leave your prayer requests in the comment section as we get ready to go into prayer before our time of study this evening. I want us to know that we can come together and pray, pray, believing, pray, trusting, um, pray um, with expectation of receiving answers and help granted some people like to continue will continue to um inbox us um and and call those who have the uh, um who, who would choose to reach out that way uh, with your prayer request and that's okay too it's our pleasure to pray pray with you it's been a long day i i must be truthful with you it's been a long day but i'm so grateful even though the day has been full of many things uh, the day has been full of the grace and graciousness of God. And so we give him thanks and we bless his name. And uh, as the song says, to him who sits on the throne, even unto the lamb, be all blessings and glory and honor. We give you all the glory. We worship you. How many want to say, are willing to say that this evening? We give him all the glory. We give him all the glory in spite of what we may be facing in the midst of our accomplishments, accomplishments and our uh, triumphs. We give glory to God in the midst of uh, as we deal with hardships and difficult situations, we turn and give God glory. Not we don't glory in the pain or the issue, but we glory in the God over or greater than the pain and the issue. We glorify our father, our God. And so we give him praise. So won't you come with me this evening as we prepare to go into prayer? Let's pray together, knowing that God is faithful and able to do. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify and we glorify your most precious and holy. You are wonderful. And we bless your name. You are awesome and mighty and we love you. There is no one like you in all the earth. We could search high and low and we would never find anyone like you. You alone are God. You alone are king. And so we bless your name. We magnify and we glorify. Hallelujah. The goodness and the greatness that is you. Thank you, God, for not being so great that you would count it robbery to be concerned with the things that concern us. Thank you for not being so grand that you can't understand we are where we are. I'm so grateful that your concern for us outweighs our concern for ourselves. I'm so grateful that your love 
is not lacking. It doesn't fall short and neither does your power concern over us. God, I thank you. I praise you and I magnify you now for being the blesser that we need, the keeper that we need, the provider that we need. You are our way maker and we bless your name. You are healer and protector. So God, now I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to be who you are. And that's awesome. Be awesome in our lives. Be protector and provider. Be healer. Be way maker. This is what I ask on this evening. As your people are dealing with so many different things, God, I pray that you uh, that you answer, knowing that you are the solution to every situation that we face. You are the God over every problem. You are the master hallelujah, of every moment that we encounter. And so we put our trust in you. We put our faith in you. And we say, do what you do best. And be a, that is to be awesome. Hallelujah. As we deal with health concerns, be awesome. As we deal with bills and, and issues in our hearts and mind, be amazing. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. That as we stand presenting our issues and concerns before you, God, I thank you that you stand with solutions. You stand with answers. You stand with the provision, hallelujah, that we need. And so we thank you now. We praise you and we magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you up. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being healer. Thank you for being way maker. Thank you for being our heavy load sharer. Those that are burdened down with the grief of loss. God, I thank you that you are there being their comfort and their song, their shield. Hallelujah. Against the woes of this life. God, I thank you that you keep them moving despite their willingness and this maybe even desire to quit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us through this far into this day in spite of the plans of the enemy. Thank you, God, that you provided and you protected. You opened and closed doors. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Because we recognize and declare that if it had not been for you, the situations of this life would have overwhelmed us. If it had not been for you, the sickness and disease would have taken us out. If it had not been for you, we couldn't take it. If it had not been for you, we couldn't make it. But I'm so grateful that your word tells us that you'll never leave us. Hallelujah. And you'll never forsake us. Hallelujah. You're an on-time God, a right there God. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. And so we thank you for at the doorsteps of many of your people, trouble has arisen. And to me, all that signifies is that you're there, that you're present, that you're showing up, that your might Hallelujah, that your standard is being raised against the plan of the enemy, against the presence of the enemy, for he dare show his face. I am so grateful that you show your might. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I am so grateful, God, that for the questions that we have, for the for the directions we should take. I thank you, God, that you're there lighting our paths, giving us strategy and direction on how to make the moves that we should make. God, I thank you that we make these moves not of our own, but our desire is to move in syncopation with you. Our desire is to move according to the beat and, and will of your heart. God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We bless your name. We magnify you. Hallelujah. We give you the glory and we bless your name. Thank you for being our strong tower. Thank you for being our hiding place. God, we give your name the glory and the praise. We give your name the honor, for we recognize there is no one like you. I pray now that you hear every spoken and unspoken prayer request alike. I pray that you send help. God, I pray that you send answers. I pray that you make ways. I pray that you open, hallelujah, the window of heaven and pour out the blessing necessary to make it through the moments that have crippled your people. Make it through, hallelujah, the situations that have caused them to be stuck in time. I thank you, God. We submit ourselves to your will and your plan. And we say, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our lives. And we'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. And we'll give you the honor. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I'm so grateful. 
I'm so grateful that he is so awesome. I'm grateful that he's awesome. I'm grateful that he's caring and he's concerned. I'm grateful that his his love for us is unparalleled. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that as we sit in our moments dealing with our situations, we're not doing it alone. But God is on our side. In, despite what the, the enemy may have said or situations may try to dictate to us, we declare Jesus. We declare his presence. We declare he is Lord. We declare he is God and we bless his name. I'm again grateful for this opportunity just to be connected with you on this evening. So good to see you all and those that I can't see because you're watching on the replay. I'm appreciative for you too because that's the beauty of having this time because some of us may have to work and can't get the liberty or freedom to be online. But technology has afforded us the ability to still catch uh, our time of prayer and study together. And so I'm grateful for you, too. I forgot to say it a little earlier, but I'm also so appreciative of our partners of the push. I, I'm asking if you would, if you haven't already, go ahead and shit tag, share. Make sure you leave your name in the comment section. Those on YouTube, make sure you're clicking that thumbs up and ringing that bell, subscribing and ringing that bell. This is important ways that you can help us get the message out. You know, when I was younger, we had to go and uh, with my grandmother and the saints and we count up our uh, our tracks. You had to count up your tracks, how many you got. Then you go on there and you stand and you pass them out. You go knock and you give them out. And this was the methodology that we utilized to get the news out there, get the gospel out there to the most people possible. We stand out there, pass out the tracks and you count. I started off with 20 and I only got five. That means I reached 15 people. And that was sometimes arduous. It was difficult. It was a lot of work, you know, because it was hot and it was rejection and you have to watch people crumple things up. But on this evening, I told a long story for this, but on this evening, all you got to do is press the button. You know what else is even easier? If you throw up some hearts and uh, by throwing up those hearts, it allows us to uh, catch the attention of the algorithms that says, hey, this is worth watching. Let's put this in the, uh, in the feed of others. So by doing so, I appreciate you for that. Thank you for our partners uh, that have uh, so willingly lent us your thumbs or your index fingers by pressing those hearts up. Thank you so much. Um, this evening, I don't want to belabor the time any more than I already have. I want to move into our time of study. It's not going to be a long time of study. I know I say that frequently, but I think our Bible studies aren't long anyhow. Um, so I'm so grateful that we can come in, say what the Lord says, and get out the way. And so I want to ask you a question. It's a little riddle. I love riddles. Riddle states this. It's a question you can ask all day long and get completely different yet correct answers. What is the question? Let me ask it again. It's a question you can ask all day long and get completely different yet correct answers. What is the question? Hmm. What is the question that you can ask all day long and get completely different questions, yet still get the correct answer. Uh, normally I would wait, but the impatience in me and the fact that we are on a, I like try to keep things in time, you know, I wanna answer it. The answer is, what time is it, right? Then I would ask you another riddle. What is harmless, but can kill you? What is harmless, but can still kill you? What is harmless, but can still kill you? The answer is time. You say, well, what is that about? And this is, are my different yet lead-ins for this evening. On this evening, I'm going to start, we're going to start in Psalms 31, verses 14 and 15. Psalms 31, verse 14 and 15. And we're going to hop around a few places, but with help, we're going to continue our talk about, uh, hear me out fully. 
we're still dealing with that um the is process right the, we're still talking about that the two process i mean we're still talking about the two process but we're focusing in more poignantly and we're looking at uh humility last week we talked about humility the humility of our voice and skill set today we're talking about time waiting patience humility um in time let's look at psalms 31. verse 14 i'm reading the niv it says but i trust in you lord i say you are my god my times are in your hands deliver me from the hands of my enemies from those who pursue me uh, and and if we look at that verse it's it, you know, those those two verses it says i trust in you lord I say, this is my declaration, I trust in you. And with my mouth, I say, you are my God. When I'm saying you are my God, what, I'm, what am I saying is my time is in your hands. Time is something that is the most valuable thing we have. We love, we love things, right? We love, uh, some people love cars, some people love houses, some people like clothes and shoes things like that. Those things are replaceable. Some people love money. And, and even though you can lose money, you can get more money back. Some people uh, have other things they love. They like collecting various things. But there's one thing that you can, that comes and can never be replaced. Uh, you can never, you can lose a friend and get a new one. But you once you lose time, time is gone. It does not come back. I know we we have we have so many um, science sci-fi shows that talk about things like um, uh, uh, time machines and the ability to to uh, control time. I'm still working with Carter because he swears up and down that he's going to build a time machine and he's going to be able to do this and or that. But the truth of the matter is time is something that we have not control over. Ponce de Leon took lots of people's money, spent a lot of his life traveling across the world, trying to find the fountain of youth, not because he wanted to look cute forever, but because he wanted to live longer. He wanted more time. You find that people always are seeking after more time because time is precious. Time is something that is so valuable when you go to work at a job, they say, I will give you money for your time. You go someplace, sometimes if you go to the mall, we don't do malls that much anymore. Um, now you can go on apps and they'll pay you for your time just to get your opinion on something because your time is valuable. Some of us have jobs that pay large sums of money. However much it is, we understand that there's some jobs I'm not going to go to because I value my time more than that. I value my time. And so I say, if you want me to come to your business, if you want me to come to your to to partner with you, use, utilizing my time, you have to give me some money. You have to give me something because we value time. We value time more than we really actually understand because we can be. We can live our whole life long, be uh, at our latter stage of lives, and, and we experience something that intrigues us. Then we all of a sudden want more time. If I only had some more time, if I only had some more minutes, if I only had more time, we desire it. And the but what we see here is the psalmist is saying, my time is in your hands. When I say you are my God, I say that I am taking my time and I'm turning it over to you. I'm trusting in my time to you because I understand that you mean me well. That's a difficult thing. Uh, uh, that's a difficult thing to say that I'll turn my time over because even when we turn our, um, our time over to um, God, it's not that we don't trust that 
that he won't do something awesome for us or that he's willing Um, but we understand that his cue is different from us. Second Peter, Second Peter three and eight. It says one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is, is as one day. Right? That's a long time if we were taking it literally. But we could take that more abstractly and say that time is irrelevant to God because time wasn't made for God. Time was made for the constraint of man to give, you know, understanding to man. So time is not something for God. So when we understand that, when we understand that time is not as important to God as it is to us, he can move as he wants to and do how he wants to do. And it, he can take a day or he can take uh, five years. And it's, it is what it is, right? Right. For us to do that, understanding that, knowing that, turn around and say, but my time is in your hands. That's That takes a level of submission, a level of humility, a level of trust that is not easy oftentimes. Because, you know, some of us say my time is in your hands. I trust you, Lord. But I have my desires. We pray and we say, I trust you, God. Forgive me this. I believe in you, Lord, but this is what I want because at the end of the day, yes, we believe he has the ability to do. Yes, we believe he has even in good intentions for us. But will it come in the time that we would want it? Does it come in enough time for me to enjoy it? Will it come for me to be able to bat? Well, I would I remember I was having a conversation um, on Sunday. And I remember we would have, uh, when I was younger, we were always very rapture conscious. And um, we would always wonder, am I going to do this? Or am I going to live this long just to get this? And then right after I experienced this, the rapture is going to take place. Or before I get to experience this, the rapture is going to come. And so I won't get the time to enjoy this. And so I'm not even going to waste my time worrying about it. Because we didn't want to get our hopes up or, uh, you know, it, it's the long story short, we focus on the time. And on this evening, um, as we're talking about being uh, uh, still talking about that humility, we're talking about humbling ourselves enough to submit our time to God, our trust in, in his in, in his doings over us. And the psalmist says that my time is in your hands and then asks to, for God to deliver him from the hands of the enemy. He trusted that my time, my life, my 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 living is in your hands. And I trust you to handle this for me because, granted, I'm using these together. And the psalmist, when he wrote that, didn't say this. But I know that you have plans for me. Thoughts of good and not of evil. I know that you have path. Of, so I can trust you with my time, knowing that what you have for me is better than what's after me. I know that I can trust you with my 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 most valuable possession because you won't leave me in debt. You won't leave. You won't allow yourself to be owing me time. If I trusted you with it, you're going to allow me to come out on top. That's what you believe when you say you are my God. It's a, it's a, a hugely packaged statement. It's not something just so simple, but there's a whole lot in it. It's saying here that I trust you. And it's important that we look at this. It's important that we see this statement because uh, I was watching um, uh, Minister Smith. Uh, he was talking about a time. There's a time for everything. You know, and we look at Ecclesiastes three It says there's a time for everything for for uh, a time for everything a season and a season for every activity under the heavens. Mm, that's one of those versions. Uh, 
But there's time for everything. And it, there was a balancing act there. We'll deal with that later. But it goes through and delineates all these different things. They have their times. And I want you to know as you trust God, he has his times for you to have what you need. I'm jumping around again, but we look and we see here, uh, the Bible tells us about uh, a man called Lazarus. He had two sisters and a really good friend a really powerful, important friend. But that man, Lazarus, got sick. And most people looked around. Some people looked around for his really important, powerful friend to come. But the friend didn't come. And the sickness is one, seemingly. That important friend, of course, we know is Jesus. And, and uh, many said, oh, if you hadn't been here, he wouldn't have died. But that was because they were looking at time in a linear fashion they were looking at time as something that only progressed forward and and their current situation couldn't be undone their current situation um had brought an end to things but he said no i don't see things as you see things i'm not controlled by things the way you are controlled and so god since your weight is upon my words he said lazarus come forth because time was irrelevant and neither was the situation when you understand you're dealing with that kind of god that's how you can say, you are my God. Uh, she just passed. Um, but she's saying one version of something that was uh, penned by Carmen. You are my God. You are my king. You are the master of everything. You are my Lord. That's why I sing to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my God. If you're saying you are my God, you're saying I trust you. I trust you uh, in spite of. And so let's bring it back to where we are, we're at. And we have been because I haven't left it yet. We are not, we're not done with Joseph. I told you we're doing a bunch of jumping around, but I pray that it's hopefully making sense to you. And it doesn't seem so sporadic. We see here, we're still in the, the 40th chapter of the book of Genesis. I'm bringing it all back there. The 40th chapter of the book of Genesis. The Bible tells us that um, Joseph is in prison. And when we look at this, I really want to pay attention to this because it tells us he was that Potiphar took him and cast him into prison. And we think, oh my goodness, Potiphar is so mad with him that he's thrown him into prison. But we have to understand that the Bible clearly tells us that he puts him into the king's prison. But who was over the king's prison? It was the captain of the guard. It was the cap uh, captain of the guard. And who was the captain of the guard? That was Potiphar. So Potiphar was still in control, still in charge, because I don't believe he fully believed his wife. And so he didn't put Joseph in just any prison. He put him in a special prison. He put him in somewhere that he could still uh, have some mod a modicum of control over and make sure he's not that uh, bad off. We can perceive. That's what we can perceive from looking at um, the text. Bible tells us that there was a baker and a, a, a butler put in there with them. Amen, Sunday. Uh, baker and butler put in there in the prison with them. And Joseph had so much compassion on them. They saw that they was troubled, that he said, hey, what's troubling? He said, hey, we had this dream. Let's look at the dream. More poignantly, it says like this. Now it came to pass. Oops, back up. Verse 12. Well, nine. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, behold, in my dream a vine was before me and in the vine there were three branches. It was, um, it was as though it budded, its blossoms shot forth, its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into the cup, Pharaoh's cup, and placed it in the cup in Pharaoh's hands. So we see here that um, uh, he had this, there was a vine, and there was the, the, the vine brought forth grapes, and those grapes were um, voluptuous, they were juicy, and he squeezed them and pulled out uh, wine and put it in the cup, uh, Pharaoh's cup. Joseph interprets and he says, the interpretation of it is this, the three branches are three days, time. Now within 
three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you will, you will be, you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner what you did previously in times past when you were his butler. But remember me when it's time when I tell you, um, well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house, for I, for indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. This was beautiful, wonderful. And so when the, the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. And there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. This is how it goes. This is how it went down. The three baskets are three days. Within those three days, that time, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh from you. We see now here, there is a talk of time. We see uh, it's not that just that Joseph said, you're going to get back in good Pharaoh, um, graces with the Pharaoh and you're not. He said in three days time in a, in after a short while, you're going to have liberation. In fact, you're both going to be liberated from this, this prison, but there's going to be the liberation is going to look differently. Now, when you first look at that, you think, oh my goodness, who would want to have to tell someone so um so accurately or with such uh um uh, exactness, something like that? Because what happens? If I be a man of God one year from today, you know, that's the type of stuff that gets you called out. You know, you're going to be in a new building. You know, this is the when you're not in that new building because you put it out there like that. Now people got, got to pull your card. Hey, you said Joseph said, hey, in three days time. Three days is nothing. Three days. In three days time, 36 hours, that, that's wrong, I'm sorry. Do your math right, Kelvin. 60, 72 hours. In 72 hours, you're going to be free from here. 72 hours. What that tells me is uh, uh, I'm in a dark space, but there is a light or a way of escape coming quickly. So that 72 hours, I can handle 72 hours. I can deal with those 72 hours. What was heavy to me and what was difficult, what was hard becomes easier to deal with because when I think that I might be here for the rest of my life, sitting in this place is difficult. Dealing with a hardship is, is not easy. It, it breaks the mind and causes one to give up, to mentally quit. Three days, but three days? I can take that. I can be in stocks for three days if I know that I'm coming out in three days. I can I can deal with on discomfort for a little while if I know this cut discomfort has a time limit. Uh, and so it made that the dream telling the dream made the 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 butler's life more bearable. Sharing that information with the butler made his 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 turmoil, hardship, something that wasn't as hard anymore. He wasn't happy with where he was, but the joy in knowing that in three days time, I'm going to be uh, relieved of this burden made that burden a lot less heavy. It made it less punitive. It made it um, something that he can endure. We can take three days. But now let's look at the, uh, the baker. The baker... Is told he has three days to live. Three days to live. Three days to think about everything you didn't get to do. Three days to imagine uh, how, how you would have done this if you could have done this. And if only I, I had a bit. If you take and waste your time thinking about what you could have and should have done, you will leave unproductive but when you're given the when you're given uh the semi 
it, it's not necessarily a good thing. I'm not going to lie to you and say it was a good thing. But at least he had the understanding of knowing, hey, I got three, I got three days. I got three days and I'm stuck in this moment. I got three days. Let me make the use, the best use of this time possible. And so if he, if the baker was smart, he said, God, I need to be right with you. God, I've done some things that I'm not proud of. I was reading and one, one uh, theologian suggested that the baker and the butler were there because there was an attempt on the Pharaoh's life. And meaning maybe somebody tried to poison the Pharaoh or whatever. And this caused because of suspicion and they weren't sure who they just threw them both in the prison. Uh, I couldn't find a scripture to back this up, but it's a good scenario. So I'm going to utilize it, but I'm giving you the, the, the forewarning that it's, it's, it's just somebody's commentary. Um, they said that it's a possibility that there was a, a maybe an attempt to poison the pharaoh, and they found out that it wasn't the butler, but it might have been the baker. And so when you know you did wrong, and you're told you only got three days left, maybe he tried to take the, the pharaoh's life for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe he served the pharaoh tainted food. Uh, whatever had caused him to get there, maybe he was guilty be, and, and deserved the punishment. But just because I'm guilty doesn't mean I can't get right. I got three days to get right. I got three days to change the 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 narrative. The narrative right now is I'm a guilty person about to die. But I can change that, take that these three days and say, God, I'm sorry. And I am guilty, but I need your forgiveness. Uh, or I can take my time and, and, and focus it on positive places. We have only a little bit of time. How will you how will you utilize the time that you are afforded? How will you make use of your time? Too many of us squander our time in unprofitable places and we wonder why we've gone nowhere and we've done nothing tangible to move forward. We say, I can't get forward in life because you're not making good use. You're not a good steward over the time that you're given. So act like you've been told you've got three days. And if I only got three days, what will I do? If I only have this much time, how can I be most profitable? This is how we have to begin to look at things. Because if we continue to think that I've got all the time in the world and, and I can uh, uh, lazily move and casually, carelessly move throughout the day, well, we will not get to where we're supposed to get because at the end of the day, Time is precious. Time is precious. So how do I make use of it? The best way is to trust that God has something for me. And I can use this time that he's afforded me and the skill set that he's given me to be the best me possible. Yes, yes, I submit my life to him. Because, you know, some people think that if we're not talking about being baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, we're not talking about the God. But the, it says, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. That's what Jesus came to say. I've come that you might have life. How are you going to live that life is the question. I'm grateful that you gave your life to Christ. But now that you sit, you got gave your life to Christ and you're sitting on the couch being unprofitable. I keep hitting at it. The Bible tells us of the three servants. There were three servants. He gave various talents to each individual's measures of value. He gave various value because each one had their own ability to do. One made good use of the, of the talents and one buried them because of fear, because he didn't trust in the skill set that had been that he had that his master saw in him. So he wasted it, squandered it. They were all servants. All of them were servants, but one was unprofitable. My question to you is with the time, the precious time that you have, how are you, how are you being profitable? You're not being profitable by sitting there speaking in tongues all day. 
You're not. You're not helping the kingdom. You're not helping the kingdom of God by memorize, sitting, in, sitting there memorizing scriptures in your houses by yourself. That's not profitable. You need to be profitable. So if, if God gave you to memorize scripture, amen. Now go outside and see how that can help somebody else if that's your focus. Because the scripture is for life, not for sitting, not for laziness, not for uh, uh, boasting to say, look what I've learned. It's for life. It brings life. So when you breathe the word of God into the life of others, into the lives of others, you help them come alive. So if you're memorizing scripture, memorize it with a purpose. If God gave you the ability to sing, don't just sing in the shower. Make use of that. Give God praise somewhere else. If God gave you the ability to clean like nobody else's business, start yourself a business and clean. Hire some people so that they can have some a job. Pay them well. But make use of your time. Bible says that eventually the, the interpretation of the dreams came to pass. In verse 20, and now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a, that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted them. Look at that. I want you to see something so awesome right there. This is an aside. This is an aside. We're going to jump back in, but I thought it was really good, and I think it was really important. Some of us, God has given us uh, to be in leadership. Look what happens. The Pharaoh had two individuals that fell out of pleasure with the, the Pharaoh. Like I said, one commentator said that there, maybe there was a, 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 uh, an attempt at the Pharaoh's life. And so he, him not being sure, he cast them both in the prison. For whatever reason, two people were put in prison. The mistake that some leaders do is when they're not sure, they just spew out or they hit everybody, the guilty and the unguilty. And then everything's just supposed to go back to normal and everything's supposed to be fine. Just move forward like nothing happened. It's not what the Pharaoh did. The Pharaoh was wiser than that. It was time, I guess maybe he found out that the baker was the one who was guilty or the baker did not deserve to live anymore for whatever reason. But it was also time for the butler to come back into service because he, he was still needed. If you're wise, you don't just say, come out that prison, butler. You say, you, you, you look how the Pharaoh handled business. The Pharaoh said, on my birthday, I want to honor you, servants. So he made a feast and all had all, and he, he made a feast for his servants. He made a feast. He celebrated his servants. Say, hey, I appreciate you. You didn't try to take my life. I appreciate you. I appreciate you and I appreciate you, butler. I'm lifting you up. I want everybody to see that I really appreciate you. I laud him with praises so that he can see that I, I'm not as, a, as some leaders have a problem saying I'm sorry. But he said, I'm taking time out of this day, out of my day, my birthday, and I'm going to set aside to, to give you some honor and give you some respect because, you know, that's how much I appreciate you. Good leadership knows how to recognize those who are uh, deserve appreciation, worked hard and, and done what they were supposed to do. The, you know, uh, it's more than just, uh, I won't go there. But what I will say is good servants, good servants, you have to make sure, make sure that you're acknowledging those who do well. Don't just wait for everybody to acknowledge you. I mean, if all you can do is wait for someone to acknowledge you and you can't properly acknowledge them. And this is how you know it's proper. If what I give you would make me happy, then it's good. But if you were to give me what I gave you, would I be happy with it? If you give me $25 after 25 years of service, 
did you really appreciate me or was this something you were just doing to uh, fill a place? How do you work for a company for 25 years and they give you a 25, uh, a plaque that's worth 25 bucks? They don't really appreciate you. Uh, if you're really appreciated, they give you something that is of value because they appreciate the time that you put in. And also what it does is it uh, incentivizes individuals to say, if you're gonna appreciate me, I don't mind working. So before he put that, allowed that cup to go back into that butler's hand to feed, put it, drink in his mouth, he said, let me make sure he's happy because I don't need him being upset now and trying to kill me. So I'm a, I'm a make him, I'm a give him um, proper um, acknowledgement. I'm going to set aside and say, hey, you're appreciated. This is what the Pharaoh does. This is how the Pharaoh responds. He says, Butler, you're appreciated on my birthday. I'm going to take this time that the whole, because all of Egypt pauses for the Pharaoh's birthday. And as I've got all of their attention, I want them to say, hey, look at the Butler. Look how awesome he is. Look at my servants. Look how well they serve and work. This is what he did. Sadly, it was time for an end for the Butler. I mean, the baker, and he died. But the Bible goes on this beginning. We talked about it on Sunday. The Bible says, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph. Forgot him. Forgot him. I mean, he got so caught up in getting released. He got so caught up in being restored. He got so caught up in being praised and acknowledged and maybe them, uh, throwing, I don't know what they did for him. He got so caught up. And he forgot Joseph. And it wouldn't have been so bad if it was a day. Not happy. Wouldn't have been so bad if it was a week. But if we look at verse four, chapter 41, verse 1, it says, and then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. That means two years has passed. Have passed. Two years. You didn't think about me once. Two years passed. You're not in that dungeon. Two years, you're not in prison. You didn't think about the fact that what I told you was coming to pass. You didn't think about the fact that you were supposed to remember me. You didn't think about the fact that uh, um, my life was still burdened. We see that time was different. The God that delivered the butler in three days allowed Joseph to stay for over two years, over two years. Because there was some time he was in there before the butler and the baker arrived. He was in there for some time before. And then two years later, after they left, he was still there. It's a hardship knowing you did nothing wrong and two years of your life have been taken. It's difficult to hold on to hope the hope of, 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 uh, of a dream and two years of your life have gone away. Hope begins to fade. But you have to remember, as the psalmist said, you are my God. That means that my times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. And although I would have wanted to be out before I got in, which doesn't make sense, but that's how I will have it be. I would have rather not been in here at all. You allowed me to be in this space. You allowed my time to be so, there must be something I need to learn from here. There must be something I need to garner from this moment, this time. What am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to, to uh, uh, glean from this? One thing I, I, I think would have been very, if, if the butler, if he had have gotten out right away, maybe there would have been some um, level of pride that would have came from connecting his ability to contact, connect and interpret and his freedom. Maybe his trust was in his skill set to uh, negotiate. 
maybe the it would have been upon uh, some of the glory would have went to the butler if he had spoke up and gotten him out. Who knows? But what I do know is God said, this time, this time right here, I need you to wait. I need you to wait. And you know, uh, uh, it's nice to sing a song. I don't mind waiting. And we just fall out. We are, we start getting, we need tissues because we salivating and bubbling so much. Because we say, I don't mind waiting. We get all extra spiritual, raising our hands, talking about I don't mind waiting. But the moment we're in a situation too long, when the answer doesn't come as quick as we thought it should, when the hardship lasts longer than we wanted it, when three days turns to two years, can we still sing a song like I don't mind waiting? Can we still make the de declaration that you are my God? What kind of God will leave me in this difficult situation? What, what, what kind of loving God would allow me to go through this? The same God that brought you to the mountaintop beforehand. The same God that caused the rain to cause your harvest to, to be bountiful. The same God who, who lifted you up when you didn't deserve it. We didn't question him in those spaces. So what gives you the authority to question him? Now, I know that's easier said than done. Trust me. I know. But the truth of the matter is, he is God. And when you say he is God, we have to be willing to humbly submit our time to him. Submit our time to him. Sometimes that means we got to be like that Pharaoh. And when we should be celebrated, we take and we turn that over to someone else. And so instead of receiving this for myself, I'm going to take my time and say, here, let me celebrate you. Here's my time. But instead of me focusing on me, let me take let me take this platform that I have and let me turn it to those who don't normally get the praise that they're they're due. Let me turn it to those who can benefit from this fortune that God has given me. Well, can you turn over your time like that? Can you be humble enough to turn over your time? Time is valuable. Can't be replaced. Are you willing to submit or, or uh, relinquish or turn over your time to God? Trust him with your time. Are you willing to trust him with your time? In this two process, we have to be able to humbly say, you are my God and my time is in your hands. You are my God and my time is in your hands. That's what we have to be willing to say. That's what we have to be willing to do. Well, I pray God has said something that has encouraged your heart or at least made you want to go back and study some more. Make us want to uh, rededicate ourselves and refocus our actions and our, our activities. God has given us so many gifts. It's time that we humbly submit our gifts and our time to him. By submitting our giftings, giftings and our time to him, we get in that right space. We get in that perfect position. Because we are, we're willingly, we're willingly saying, I choose you. I choose you. I prefer you. What you have for me is better than, although there's this over here. There, I see this over here. But I choose you. And I show, I prove I choose you. Because I give you my skill set. I give you my time. And I say, you are my God. Let's make that our, our declaration. Let's make that our life practice. Not just walking around, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I love Jesus. Do you really? Let's, let's, let's make it more than words. Psalmist said, this is what I say. And this is what I mean. I say you are my God. What I mean is my time is in your hands. 
<sighs> well, God bless you. I hit my eight o'clock still anyhow. God bless, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you with strength. God bless you with, uh, with strength and patience. It's difficult, but it's necessary. Again, um, I pray that you were blessed by the word uh, of the Lord on this evening. Hey, um, I believe God is moving in our midst and doing some powerful things um, in our lives. And it's taking uh, some, it's, it's requiring something of us. It's, this time, it's not just going to be, for many of us, it's not coming by just us happening to be happening to be there. We have to willingly choose God for us to really move. I mean, I'm not speaking destruction and death. I'm not. But what I'm saying is for us to, to get to where God wants us to meet our full potential, we got to have some humility and submission of those things we are, are most precious to us. So let's be about that. Let's do that. Um, again, I want to thank all of our partners in pushing, but also want to thank our partners in giving. I want to continue to um, encourage you that your giving is not in vain, but your giving goes a long way to help others and impact the lives of those less fortunate than ourselves. Many times that comes in various ways, but what I can say is if it, uh, it, it happens because God places it upon your heart to give and we say thank you for it. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for partnering with us we, give, we pray God's blessings upon you. I pray that because you choose to give and you choose to sow seeds, uh, God causes blessings to hit your house. I pray that, pray that those things which you give out, God doesn't allow you to walk in lack, but he causes you to move in abundance because you have a spirit, you have a heart to help, a heart to give. You can give by going to the cash app and typing in dollar sign myhhc or you can go to givelify and search for hope hill cathedral however you choose to give whatever god lays on your heart to give we say thank you and we appreciate your contributions to hope hill cathedral thank you everybody for joining in uh, our all of our family friends and partners thank you so much for your presence on this evening listen Life is difficult. Situations sometimes seem rough, but even in your darkest moments, in those times when you think all is lost, I wanna remind you, there is hope on the hill and that hope is for you. God bless you, grace and peace. Mm -hmm.